FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. This is Faux Monday's The Snackable Companion Show to FOMO Sapiens, which will, of course, be back with a full episode on Thursday. But until then, happy Faux Monday. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night. Of course, FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now, on Thursday, I have a very special guest. One of my, I guess, the interviews this year that just kind of stuck in my head a lot, which is a conversation with Marshall Goldsmith. Now, Marshall is kind of like the world's top executive coach. That is what people say about him. He's sort of renowned. And he has a new book out called The Earned Life, which is about how to live without regret, which I think is a very valuable thing, especially as we enter a recession. It's sort of like, why didn't I buy that Bitcoin? Why didn't I sell that Bitcoin, right? I don't know. Depends on which seat you're in. But that is regret, and it is a useless emotion. I often say that it's good if it keeps you from doing something very naughty, you know, committing a crime or something, or you learn from something very naughty you did. But otherwise, I don't know. It feels like it just cultivates a scarcity mindset and a ton of FOMO, which we do not like on this show. Now, as I thought about Marshall, I also thought about this concept that I really love that I encountered this year in Scandinavia. Now, it is not Higge. I like Higge. Higge is this thing from Denmark. It's like cozy coziness. And if you go to Denmark, every stupid store is called Higge store and they sell like a fur rug, which is nice. I don't have a fur rug, but if you gave me one, I would probably enjoy it immensely. But it's not about Higge. There's another Scandinavian concept that I thought was super cool that is not as famous, at least it wasn't to me, and it is called Logom. L-A-G-O-M. Logom. It is You know, it's from many of the parts of the region, apparently, but it's really credited to be a Swedish word. Logom means, quote unquote, just the right amount or not too much, not too little. It can be translated as in moderation, in balance, perfect, simple, just enough, ideal, suitable. And whereas words like sufficient and average suggest some degree of abstinence, scarcity, or failure, Logom carries the connotation of appropriateness, although not necessarily perfection. That's a lot. Those are a lot in there. That's very complicated. But I, you know, I think it's really just good to think about the idea of like not too much, not too little. The right amount is the best. And the cool thing about this is that it comes from, I guess, in the folklore, this concept that it was a Viking term that when they would pass around a horn of mead, you know, their sort of alcohol. They would make sure everybody got a fair share, not too much, not too little. And this was something they did in community. The phrase has been used for a thousand years and it is still a guiding principle for everyday life in Sweden. And now the rest of us are taking note. And what's cool about it is I went to this event called Brilliant Minds over the summer. You might remember it. And the the, the CEO of Brilliant Minds is Anastasia Seabom, who was on this show Many years ago now, we're talking 2019, because she was running a company called Quintessentially. She then left Quintessentially, went to Brilliant Minds. And Brilliant Minds is this incredible, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a conference, I guess. I guess you could say that, but it's much more than a conference. I don't want to limit it with the word conference because, you know, it's more than that. Brilliant Minds is this place where this foundation, the Brilliant Minds Foundation, brings together a bunch of people who are really different on the surface, but I think underneath it all, they're open-minded and creative and they are, you know, in some way or the other, willing to learn about the concept of logom. So I think, you know, not everybody, if you get some like crazy entrepreneur from Silicon Valley, maybe logom feels a little 
a little distant there, but they tell us about Logum. And so I actually, I learned about it there. And this event, as I mentioned, is really special. It's in Stockholm in the summertime. It's organized by the Brilliant Minds Foundation. Some of the people involved in that are Marcus Wallenberg, who's from the very prominent Swedish business family, Daniel Ek, the founder of Spotify. And then they invited these really fascinating people, people I would like kill to have on FOMO Sapiens. There was Esther Perel, Gail King. Uh, there were CEOs of companies like Klarna and Frame. There was actually a CEO of a company called Volaback who's gonna be on this show very soon, so get ready for that. And many other really prominent people, influencers and NFT peoples and Gary V's and all, all those types of people. And there were some really interesting kind of celebrity folks in the room and Emma Watson here or there, which was really cool to see her. Edward Norton speaking about the environment. I could go on and on and on. You can go check out their website at Brilliant Minds and learn more. But really, you know, it's nice to have all these bright lights in the room, but it's not about that. There's not, nobody even has a name tag, which is really cool. So that's a little log on right there because the minute you put a name tag on somebody, you start putting them in a box and that is not what Brilliant Minds do. Brilliant minds are open-minded and they also recognize that there's room for everybody in that room to have a conversation with everybody else, which is really cool. And so that is where I found the concept. And I just remember seeing this panel of different Swedish entrepreneurs talking about the concept. And I thought it was really interesting because imagine, you know, just having that as your societal construct as something that's important to your culture. It's very healthy in my mind. It can have, I guess, some downsides because maybe you're afraid to raise your hand and stand out from the pack. But there is something about this collective responsibility about everybody recognizing that we all have to share that has value. And if you have spent time in Scandinavia, you see that in the culture, this notion of caring for the environment that's very log on. The idea of looking after your fellow citizen very log on. In fact, levels of trust among people in that part of the world are extremely high. That's why, for example, when you're in Oslo in Norway, they don't really even check if you have a ticket for the subway. Same with Copenhagen, which is, whoa, what is that about, right? I mean, in New York, that would never happen. That's why people jump the turnstile. Not me, other people. But I just was kind of blown away at the implications of having the log on mindset on a society. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to give you seven things to think about when it comes to log on, how to cultivate it in your own life right after the break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, we're talking about how to cultivate log on today. And I got a bunch of things for you. I did some research because I'm cultivating my own over here based on all the things I learned out in Sweden this summer. But the good news is people write books about log on. It's that important. It's better than Hige. Sorry to say it, but it is. So here's number one. Take regular work breaks. Don't be a grinder. I remember in high school and early college, I would read the chapters that were not assigned. I would memorize parts of books. I would not take breaks. Not a lot of log I'm in there. It wasn't very healthy. And in fact, I've had to learn from overwork and stress. You got to make time for yourself. You got to get up every hour and walk around for a couple of minutes. Remember Juliet Fun came on the show, had a book called A Minute to Think. She puts five or 10 minutes between every meeting just to have a little time to think, to cultivate logum, not too much, not too little, just the right amount, let's make space. So do that, give yourself little work breaks. It's good for every part of your body, your psyche, your, your mind, your back, right? Sitting is new smoking. And so you just want to give yourself space so that you are not overwhelmed with work, but you can instead cultivate a sense of presence, balance, and lock on. Number two, prioritize socializing. Make it important, but don't go crazy. Make it simple. What does that mean? You know, I am the ultimate person who breaks this rule because I, whenever I have a party, I invite way too many people. I just wanna see the mix of the people in the room. I tell everybody, bring people, I wanna meet new people. But then at the end of the night, I look around and I'm like, wow, that was a lot. I barely spoke to the people I wanted to see the whole time I'm running around. It's just not as enjoyable as it should be. 
And then I meet up with one or two people and have a three hour conversation. I'm like, wow, that was so nourishing. I learned so much. What a great thing for my soul, right? It's the the balance that I'm striving. And so I think that's really important. And and the other thing you can do is you don't have to have a big party, right? You don't have to have drinks with people at some bar. You go for a walk, go into nature. That is very logum. So it's important to think about putting people first, making sure you have room in your life and you prioritize social bonds. Because we all know from the many, many studies that people who are more connected to others are happier. That is the number one driver of happiness and fulfillment. But also just being among a million people in a crowd is not gonna get you there. You have got to make a concerted effort to have quality time. And I recommend doing it outdoors. There's nothing better than a walk in the woods to get you talking about real things. Number three, give yourself time to get where you're going. This one sounds so basic. I know, I know. You're like, why? I gotta tell you, this is so powerful. I have a friend whose name I will not say, but you know who you are, who was going to therapy. And she said that every time she arrived to therapy, she'd be late. And the therapist would say, you know, why are you late? And she said, well, you know, I was just, I was working or I was at home and I left at the last minute and I had it, had I, everything gone perfectly, I would have been right on time by the second. But, you know, the train was late or they couldn't find a cab or there was traffic or whatever and I'm late. And her therapist said to her, and I never ever forgot this because it actually changed the way I think about things. Be kind to yourself. When you're running late, you're rushing. It's stressful. It's not very kind behavior. And so if you give yourself appropriate time to get where you're going so that you even get there earlier and can chill for a minute and you know take a minute maybe a little meditation maybe read the news maybe make a phone call that is log on you are giving yourself balance so you're not rushing around and stressing yourself out you're taking care of yourself you're being kind to yourself and of course it's just nice to be on time it's respectful of others all right we'll be back with numbers four through seven right after this break fomo fomo all right, everybody, we're back and we are cultivating Lagom together. I got number four for you here and it's a good one, declutter and reuse. I love it because it's like sustainable, so Scandinavian and it's also very Marie Kondo. Now Marie Kondo is, I, I mean, if you had done it, you know, although I have not, I, I think nobody really does it like she does it. I've done very minimal versions. I've Marie kondo the Marie Kondo. But the idea of decluttering and reusing is great. And it makes me think, actually, it's kind of interesting. I've had this experience lately where I went into my clothing closet and I found all this clothes I haven't worn since 2018, 2019. And I've been wearing these clothes because I also lost some weight. So everything fits me again. Thank you. Thanks. End of pandemic. And so anyway, you know, it's just like you're reusing these clothes that you loved and you haven't worn in a long time. And you sort of think like, I could have gone out and spent all this money on new things, but this stuff is perfectly acceptable. It's nice stuff. I love it. It's just that I forgot it existed. So go back in that closet. There's stuff also that you look at and you're like, well, I haven't worn this since 2011. Get rid of it, right? And that's why moving is so helpful. As many of you know, when you move apartments, you have to just throw stuff away. And so having moved a couple of years back, I did toss a lot of stuff and I haven't really missed any of it except around Halloween. Sometimes you're sort of like, oh, I wish I'd kept that weird hat. But otherwise, it's pretty easy. So when you declutter, you reuse, not only are you being sustainable and you know that always feels good, but then there's just less stuff. It's terrible to open up a closet and have stuff falling down on you, which I think we've all been there. And when you open it up and it's nice and neat, you just feel like there's balance in your life. There's some log on. All right, number five. This one's pretty obvious, but it's gotta be said. Sleep and exercise, meditation, stuff like that. Anything that has your the machine that is your body running more efficiently, effectively, in which you have the ability to parse emotions, in which you feel good in your body, all those things are gonna give you the balance, the logom that you need. I'm not gonna belabor that point. I think it's pretty darn obvious, but it has to be said. Number six, this is a nice one too, and this is so Swedish. Don't be too hard on yourself when you don't achieve lagom, right? So you're gonna have a day when you're just gonna be totally extreme. You're gonna do nothing on this list, 
But you also recognize that every day is a chance to start over, that being really mean to yourself is not log on. It's just counterproductive. And so having perspective, I think that's really what we're talking about here. All of this concept, this entire Lagom thing is about being intentional, mindful, right? I mean, it's the, the, all the ancient traditions have this within them and we forget it. But if you think about it, this is just wisdom that allows humans to live life without freaking out all the time. But sometimes you are going to freak out and you shouldn't beat yourself up. And finally, all things in moderation, including moderation, of course, right? Sometimes you just need to be a little intentionally crazy, loco. You got to do something a little nuts. You got to dance on the table. You got to run the ultra marathon. You got to start the business, even though you're not sure why you're doing it. You got to yell at the stranger on the street, which isn't nice to do, but we all do it. You just have to. And so, you know, the last point I made was like sort of about being easy on yourself when you don't have log on, but also like accept the fact that sometimes it's okay and it's good to aggressively be on log on. And I don't know if the Swedes are going to agree on that point. So if you're Swedish and I've totally, totally messed it up, write me. But I think having now lived as much as I have, and I know you feel the same way, that sometimes you just got to do something that's a little outside the box because then you know you're alive. You can't always be Lagom. You should be most of the time though, if you want to live a long and healthy life, but not all the time. All right. So that is Lagom. I really like it. I've been thinking about it, trying to institute it into my life. I hope you will too. If you have ideas, thoughts, or Swedish and you want to yell at me, find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on email at let's connect at patrickmcginnis.com. All right. I think we should all go out and enjoy some delicious Swedish things. Aquavit, Swedish meatballs, herring, lagom. <laughs> They're all good. All right. I'll see you on Thursday with another episode of FOMO Sapiens featuring Marshall Goldsmith and his new book, The Earned Life. But until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.